Hello everybody, welcome back to Best Brew Ever. This is the uh, the New Year's edition. Uh, we're in the garage because it's kind of people inside making noise. Gotta get out here and get a little quiet. Um, this episode is a little bit different. Um, I've been really busy with a lot of things, um, like always, but you know, I I filmed a lot of things over what past couple months that I've been doing this. I think since October, and um, I haven't been able to, you know, edit and upload everything uh, how I wanted to. And I've been trying to find a place for everything. It's really kind of complicated um, as far as the way I want to you know, present everything to you. So. Um, Maybe I'll get it down in 2017, but uh, for 2016, um, you know, I, I've got things just set aside, and it's kind of irrelevant uh, after a while, kind of, because, you know, things were not fresh or new um, as far as, like, some of the beers or, or whatever I, I reviewed, or, you know, I just had kind of things kind of stockpiled, never got around to it. Um, and uh, so this is kind of a, a cleaning out the closet of of the videos. So this, but this is all about. Um, there is a a small speed brew session in this episode, uh, but that's from like Thanksgiving. Um, there's, you know, I recorded some a little bit of something for uh, Christmas, but never got around to to editing and posting it. So this is kind of just a a mashup of of all the things that you know I wanted to show. I never found time to show it. I never got around to making it uh, the way I wanted it or, or getting it uh, you know mashed up with something that I thought was relevant. So this is all irrelevant. It's all just from you know the time that I started you know till now. And uh, so. It's uh, you know it's it's not gonna be the normal show, but uh, hopefully you know cool things will be coming for 2017. Hopefully I'll get it together and be able to film, edit, post on time in a relevant um, kind of you know time spot. You know to, to where I'm not showing Thanksgiving brewing on New Year's like I am today. So hopefully I can get it together. Just uh, time-wise, it's always been a problem. But hey, you know, this is what it's all about. You know, is trying to get things together and and make it work. So cleaning out the closet, give you some content, let you see what I was thinking about or what I had shot, and just kind of get that out there and get it off the computer and it make way for for new, more interesting stuff. Hopefully. Um, but uh, for now, I'm going to drink this Center Point Stout. I think they call I think they call their beers like a red, a black, a gold, a white. Um, so I guess the name of this is the black. So the Center Point Black. It's pretty good. I, a lot of people, I think at the brewery. They put a marshmallow in there. They call it the King Arthur, the King Arthur version, I guess, or style, King Arthur style when you put the marshmallow in there. Um, without the the marshmallow, I'm still enjoying. It. It's a good, it's a good style. Still not uh, being paid to promote them, uh, but like I said, my dad is always in there. Got me this cool hat, you know. Um, so you know it's it's good beer. So I'm happy to you know give uh, you know a little shout out to uh, some good Indianapolis breweries. I love that you know um, always you know don't always drink local. I mean drink local is is great, but there's plenty of you know uh, American breweries out there that we love. So um, drink local when you can, and um, just you know. Everybody says, you know, I want uh, to support American-made this and American-made that, 
but you know they're drinking what Budweiser which is uh, you know was it Belgian owned I don't even know who owns InBev um, you know all the the majority of so-called American beers are owned by foreign companies so if you really want to drink American buy American drink your your local craft brews you know so uh, without you know any more said about that um, I think we're kind of roll into what I wanted to post for Christmas I got a little tipsy off of the center point <laughs> some center point brew and uh, I think it shows in that um, but uh, I think you know this is gonna it's just kind of kind of roll we're gonna go with the the Christmas and it'll, it's gonna bounce around so just bear with it it might seem a little uh, out of place you know the different uh, videos but because they are out of place they're all weren't meant to ever go together so I uh, hope you enjoy uh, the little cavalcade of New Year's brewing videos and beer videos beer related so enjoy and happy new year hello everybody welcome back to best brew ever this is a relaxed episode um, it's you know right before Christmas and wore out from everything work and and getting everything taken care of and I think how most people are so I'm just I'm just kicking back and relaxing on this one um, I got my uh, Nice Belgian double from the good people at uh, Center Point Brewing, it's a new brewery here in Indianapolis. This is not a paid plug for them or anything. It's actually a, um, a new spot that my dad's been going to, and he's been bringing me their beers. And uh, like I say, you know, they're they're pretty good in this Belgian. I'm not even gonna try to get in the lab. I'm sorry, you know, for them not to get a good shot of the beer on here, but it's just like I said, it's a relaxed episode. Oh yeah. It's you know, that's I don't know the the name of this one, it's just the Belgian double as far as I know right now. <clears throat> it's a eight percenter. So that's uh that's not a chugging beer, it's a sipper. Um, but that kind of falls in line with, you know, the, the mood right now with me. You know, um, if it wasn't for copyrights, I'd play some smooth jazz or something. It's, I do like that. And with the Christmas spirit, a little Nat King Cole would be appropriate. But, uh, I guess I can't do that, <clears throat> so, we'll just talk without the ambient music. Well, in the last episode we did the Bicentennial Ale, Bicentennial Ale, Bicentennial Ale, <laughs> and, um, would like to have some <laughs> uh, to show but it's not like the other ones it's not like I killed it this time uh, this time actually just today moments ago or maybe an hour ago I, uh, I kegged it and I would have done it a couple days sooner but like anything man nothing works out perfect and I had a problem I guess I had some a leak in my uh, my kegging system and I didn't notice it because I had my uh, CO2 tank in the keyser 
and uh, in order for me to have it in the keyser, the um, the gauges have to be <clears throat> excuse me have to be like turned down for it to clear the lid. So I had no idea that it you know it was empty. It was it empty? Uh, I came home. It was last weekend. Actually, I can't even remember. Whatever it was, I. I was trying to, uh, actually I kegged another beer this time that I made um, offline, I guess, off video, because it was kind of experimental, kind of one of the, the cheaper beers I was trying to make, and it's no good. But uh, I was still trying to keg it, I mean I didn't know. Uh, it was no good. I went to keg it and things empty. The tank was empty. Nothing working. Uh, kind of MacGyvered it a little bit because of the uh, Walking Dead Pale Ale had kicked. Uh, like the same day I was I kegged the, the cheap beer. And so I hooked up some lines because I knew that the cake to the pale ale still had some CO2 in it, it was pressurized. So I hooked that up to the new one, was able to pump some out. Um, I mean, it was obviously not going to be as good because it was flat, but that's not everything in a beer to me. I mean, if it's a good beer, if it's a good flavor, it doesn't have to be you know, carbonated or cold. I know that might sound weird, but whatever. But, uh, yeah, but it tastes like crap anyway. So, uh, after pressure had come out of that, uh, the pale ale keg, I just started <laughs> dumping the uh, uh, cheap beer. I, I'm still drinking it. I'm not going to dump it out. Still drinking it. I made it. I paid for it. I'm drinking it. You know, it wasn't bad enough to where I had to put it down the drain. I know some people are like, "Uh, oh, this I'm not drinking this." And maybe, maybe I should be like that. I don't know, but I'm not. Um, like I said, I made it. I put the time in. Paid for it. Made it. And drinking it. It's it's not disgusting. But it's nowhere near a good beer, so I'm glad I didn't make a video on it. Um, but it was kind of something I was messing with off, you know, off the record. It didn't work out. But, you know, the fact still remained that I, my, my CO2 tank was empty and I got a leak somewhere in the system. So, with juggling life, Christmas. I uh, finally today I went and got the uh, the tank uh, exchanged, and uh, luckily I have a, a prax air close to the house because my uh, my homebrew supply shop, which is farther than the prax air, but last time I was in there they 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 don't do uh, twenty pound tanks. Was what I have. So the price there, it's easy going there. Let the guy know what's up. Swap it out. Pay for it at the other spot, and you know I'm on my way. So I brought it home. I'm like, man, because you know the 20 pound tank should last me forever. Um, and it would last me like a month, two months. Yeah, about two months. Um, and I didn't do that many brews in, with it. And so I, you know, soap and water, all the fittings, and I found two leaks. So, uh, but, you know, I should have been, that's probably something you should regularly do um, with your with your system, you know. It's just maintenance on everything, you know. Clean it, take everything apart, clean it out. 
you know, even sometimes the uh, um, the airlines when you're if you're like uh, quick carving it, you do the rocking method. Sometimes the the beer can run up into the the airline, you know. So you know, I, I cleaned everything out and uh, check for leaks, no leaks, and um, this time the CO2 tank has like a little collar on it, like a handle, and it will not fit in the in the keyser, so I have to uh, leave it out. Um, the guy I bought the uh, keyser from actually had drilled a hole in the side to accommodate that, you know, have the the CO2 tank out of it, <clears throat> and then run the uh, the hose in. So that's how I got it. Now it's a little it's less convenient as far as moving the keys around and out to get you know put stuff in, check things. Um, but that's what I got to do for this one. So that's what I got to do. So because of that, you know, I just kegged the bicentennial ale. I don't know what it tastes like and I don't have anything to show you. I don't have any reports other than, you know, uh, when it was fermenting, uh, you know, I, I smelled that, uh, the CO2 coming out of the airlock and it, it smelled it good. It smelled it good. <laughs> um, but hopefully soon, because, you know, I was planning on taking this um, to Christmas and it's this is Thursday um, the Thursday before Christmas so uh, yeah I'll probably fast carb this one too I, I just gotta sit for now I'm tired I'm not gonna mess around with it um, you know I'm just gonna this is relaxing I'm just gonna relax you know the kids in bed Hang out. <laughs> Peaceful. Very nice. But, um, hopefully, as you know, soon as possible. I do really do want to get a, a a taste on that just to even see how it came out because it's, I guess, kind of a partial mash. I put partial mash on there. Um, because I mean I did have to mash the grains and the and the uh, flake corn and everything. So I mean it is a partial mash. This wasn't a, uh, a big partial mash, I guess. Like it wasn't uh, as many. I didn't mash as much grain that I probably could have, and probably would have made for a better beer. And I, that's what I think in the future I'm going to try to in these cold. Um, months uh, I'm gonna do that because I you know all grains kind of out of it although I am thinking about doing some small batch all grains just gotta figure out what I want I want to do everything there's a million beers I want to make I have this much money and uh, you know so many beers to make and enjoy. <clears throat> Excuse me. But, um, that's really kind of what I got working on. Um, just figuring out what I'm going to do. Uh, and, you know, I'm progressing. I, you know, I've acquired. Uh, more equipment here and there and uh, I think in this episode I think I am going to show a brew um, but I think it's going to be <laughs> so I'm, I'm so you know far back you know I'm not caught up with stuff that I filmed and stuff that I've shown and I'm it's, you know putting things everywhere because I'm also uh, doing the uh, Our Crazy Kitchen 
that was my daughter um, if you you know check it out um, so you know now I'm, I'm taking on another level to this whole thing and you know, that's more editing and that's the editing that's, that's that's what kills you you know it's not just it's the filming I can get stuff filmed and out but the editing and polishing and and this and that even though these you might look at it and say it's polishing this is not you know the greatest but I'm doing for what I got so I think for what I'm working with I think I'm doing pretty good I'm happy with it so far <clears throat> so with that I think I'm gonna show the speed brew which is like the first attempt at like the cheap beer I know that that sounds bad I know that people are like well I don't want to tune in and watch it somebody make a cheap beer I can buy cheap beer every day at, uh, at the liquor store you know but it's, it's the point is to make a good flavorful beer maybe not show quality definitely not show quality but you know something that I want to drink that I don't want to pay an arm and a leg for over you know that crap beer so that's that's really kind of the whole thing and I don't want to keep going on with that I don't want to keep talking about it um, you know I, I kind of just want to get that recipe down and uh, and then move on I just want to move on with some some good beers so and you know um, I'm sure with you know the the holidays and all that people are probably thinking you know how come not making stouts or holiday ales or spice this and that and um, uh, I really don't know why I'm not. it's like I'm, I'm I'm trying to get this section right and uh, I don't want to just keep jumping 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 I, I, I want to eventually get to where on the this show I can make seasonal beers make these great you know oh it's this season we're gonna make this and this but I'm still at the same time trying to learn everything the way you know perfect things and and get things down pat and you know because now I mean going from all grain now to to partial mash and extracts you might say well the extracts and all that's easy but it's not easy to make the beers the way I want them and still you know I'm trying to make the good extracts and then the cheap stuff and I know you like I said we already talked about that but it's what I want to do it's what I want to get done so because I want to have some tasty cheap cheap beer so I can have it you know on tap when I need it and then let the the good stuff chill and do what it needs to do and, and be be good for why it's good um, so I think I'm coming around the corner I think I'm figuring out uh, how to achieve those goals but I mean hopefully you guys just hang in there with me and, and like I said figure things out as I figure them out <laughs> I, don't know, I think it's doubles kicking it <laughs> but you know I'm still having fun this is you know, a fun little gig <clears throat> um, I wish I could say that you know this was my job this would be great if this was my job but um, the fact is that I have a full-time job I'm a full-time dad and I'm a part-time youtuber and uh, but maybe in the future that will change we'll just have to see where things go but you know I am having fun. This is cool. A, you know, it's it's another job that you don't be making. 
practically nothing to do. But it is fun. I mean, so I guess it's kind of like hobby. It's weird to have a, a hobby that's a job. I don't know. I feel like I'm benefit. Benefit. <laughs> oh, Belgian double. Benefiting from it. I think I better go ahead and bring this episode to a close because I think uh, it's time just to tune on, relax, drift off into the next day. <laughs> so uh, maybe I'm going to show the speed brew, maybe I'm not, I don't know. And uh, if I am, here it goes. And if I didn't, Um, but hopefully I will have a, uh, uh, New Year's episode, something for New Year's, and, uh, I have no idea what that would be, but hopefully you'll enjoy it, hopefully you enjoy, you know, the the other content that I've been putting on here, or that I'm going to put on here, the content that I have on here, and the uh, content that I, oh man, the content that I will put on here. So until next time, Sam, Belgian Double. Best brew ever. <laughs> Here we are with the ingredients for the speed brew. We have uh, Safel USO5, an ounce of Columbus, maltodextrin, because we don't have any grains in this one. It's for some body. Uh, liquid malt extract, we have 3.3 uh, pounds of Vienna and granulated sugar. Let's get brewing. Add two gallons of water. One, two. water at 150 degrees add the 3.3 pounds of liquid malt extract stir well and add one pound of granulated sugar bring to boil put bittering hops for 45 minutes then take out the hop bag and add your aroma hop Last 10 minutes of boil, but desired amount of maltodextrin. Rehydrate yeast. Cool wort, put fermenter. Add water to desired gallon line. Give it a stir. Add yeast, put on lid and airlock. Fill airlock. You are done. Alright, YouTube, this is my first ever blog whatever review content that I'm putting on my page uh, it came to me the other day uh, when I was at uh, a local uh, restaurant and I had a beer called Beer Rito and uh, it's a Vienna lager by Oscar Blues and it was pretty good I liked it and <clears throat> on TV all of a sudden I see this uh, commercial for Burger King, they have a Whopper Rito, and it's kind of you know gimmicky to have both you know the beer Rito, Whopper Rito. But I figured let's we'll see what they taste like together, and it's not too far fetched. I mean, uh, the Whopper Rito is supposed to be a burrito, which is Mexican food, and uh, 
the burrito was a Mexican lager. It says Mexican lager, but it's a Vienna lager. And, um, which is, you know, common in Mexico. So, I, this is not too far-fetched to see if they, they pair together. Or is it just a name? It's not like, uh, I don't think they put the, uh, idea of, of trying these together. This is something I was thinking about the other day and I've never had this Whopperito. It actually looked gross on TV but let's try them out together. Yeah, Whopperito is actually big. Let me get a shot of that. I got my nice Vienna Mexican style lager. I don't know if it's picking it up on there. But it's clear, it's got a nice copper color to it. I'm just get a sip of the beer first. Well that's good. It's got a nice malt character to it. It's clean. Uh, it's not you know, a boring uh, a light lager. That's something you can drink all the time. Let's go in for the Waparito. That's not bad. So it's not bad. I mean, it's not something I'd be. When I think Mexican food, I want to get a Whopperito, but to try it out, I'm surprised. Let's go in for the for the beer now. I don't think this is a bad combination. I mean, I would. I think I'm gonna enjoy eating this. And drinking these beers, I know I enjoy drinking the beers, but as a, a pair, it, it works. It's good. So the Wap Beer Rito is, I give it a good rating. Enjoy. All right, everybody. This is something that I've been wanting to do for a little while. Uh, this map has been out for a while for people who are. Um, video game fans like I am gamers out there and also home brewers or craft beer fans um, this was something I thought was pretty cool um, it was actually something uh, that came out in uh, the Call of Duty 3 DLC map uh, it's called Micro and as you can see this is a shot of of uh, from up high you're pretty much in a barbecue but you're you're miniature so uh, you're kind of down in all the the junk down there but what I thought was cool is if you can see to the right those cases of beer if you kind of zoom in on them you kind of go down there it says fat city homebrew and as you said, oh, it's also 8% alcohol, which is pretty good homebrew. Um, and you can actually get inside there and, and fight people and, and run around as the characters on the, on the game. But to me, this is like the first time I've ever seen uh, homebrew related things in a video game. And I guess it's not exactly homebrew because, I mean, if you can see, it's commercially packaged in cans and it's got all the stuff, but it says homebrew, so I think it's kind of giving a nod to craft beer and home brewing. And I think that's really cool. And if you cut to the left, you can see there's, they got kegs over here. Metro Brewery. And that's pretty cool, you know, I mean, it's something brew related so it might not be exactly homebrew related or even craft beer but if we pan back 
you can kind of see, you kind of go down to Metro Brewery, it's cider. And I didn't really notice that until now when I started filming that these are not kegs of beer. I mean, from what it looks like, and if you go to the next one, there's two kegs, it says cider as well. So that's really weird. I mean, I guess people do like hard cider, but um, that's really weird to have a, a barbecue with two kegs of hard cider. But anyway, if we kind of pan up, you see the mess of, of bottles and cans and I don't, I guess, mylar balloons. And they got a, uh, you can kind of see the, the, the beer bottles around, the Fat City beer bottles. And if you go over to the cooler, we'll make our way down through all the cakes. And you see there's a bottle there. You go to the cooler and see all the cool, um, I guess, homebrew, in quotations. We kind of go down and look around at some of the labels down here. We can see any. It's more cider. What in the world? What is it? What is this? Let's look at the back of this label. What's the ingredients? It's got pigeons in it. It's four grams of pigeons. 16 milligrams of lethargy. It's got 15 milligrams of fat in it. And 15 grams of not sugar. That's something I just learned. Got 15% YOLO. The best homebrew money can buy. It's only 42 calories. But calories from fat is 300. This is some weird homebrew. Uh, what is this? Let's look at the. This is the cider. The supple taste of a metro brew is not unlike a subtle shrew in the morn or in the nigh. Who in the world wrote this? This beautiful taste makes angels cry. You unbind and cap a course. See, what in the world is this? Contains malted barley. The cider contains malted barley. Some weird, wild stuff. Let's go around and look at, see what, if we see anything else different in here. Because this is really the first time I've seen that. We got some Dr. Monty's. Was that cream soda? Something like that. Yeah, so got some pop for the kids, the zombie kids, and well, I guess that's probably about it. That's some really cool stuff that I haven't seen as far as the ingredients. I never looked at, and we got our Fat City homebrew and our tons of cider for some reason. But um, this is just something I thought it was really cool and something that you don't really see in everyday gaming as far as something beer related other than like Tapper or something like that from the old days and there, I'm sure there's probably other um, beer related things that are in games but this kind of gives a nod to home brewing and, and craft beer and I just thought it was pretty cool and maybe people who out there who don't actually game would never actually be able to see something like this and it's just something uh, to show the viewers so uh, for everybody out there who thought this was cool so did I